Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope you guys are doing well out there. I'm doing pretty damn good. Today, a little bit of an unboxing. Some parts for the Snake Pit Wannabe Custom, not so custom, slash style guitar. And what do we got here? Stumac. So I was going through my inventory of parts and found out that I didn't have something that I needed to complete this guitar. And if you guess the frets themselves, well, you are right. So I had to place an order with Stumac to get some frets, fret wire. And uh, yeah, so now I think I got myself pretty much covered as far as having what I need or enough of it. So I'm gonna open this up. And let's see what I got here. All right. So I ended up buying, was this 40 feet? 40 some odd feet. Um, let's see here. Quantity. Where is it? 44 feet of 158 fret wire. And this is the wide pyramid which has a longer tang on the bottom of it as well, uh, which means it's gonna go into the fretboard and not cause me any problems. So this is pretty heavy. I mean, this is this is like, shit, what did it say as far as pounds? Eh, not quite a full pound, but almost there of fret wire. Nice tube, you can hang this up, kinda of like that. So I've been getting these phone calls comes up on my cell phone as a likely scam or a scam likely and these guys never leave a message so I just kind of like blow it off and say okay well maybe it's just like you know someone trying to sell me car insurance or or vehicle warranty or you know some other bullshit scam well I finally had enough of it and I decided to call the number back to find out what it was and surprisingly it was Xfinity you know the guys from Comcast. So they're telling me that my modem is outdated and they want to send me a new one. I said, okay, fine, go ahead and send me a new one. I told them about their uh, caller ID coming up as a scam. They said, yeah, that they know and they're trying to fix that. So I decided to go online just to check to see what my current speeds are before I upgrade the modem. And uh, this is what I'm getting for downloads and upload speeds, which they're telling me on the phone that I should be seeing with the new modem, 600 megabits download and 24 upload. Well, I'm kind of getting that now, aren't I? All right, so I got a little bit of a jump start on this thing. I got four frets already installed. They're locked into place. I use CA glue to kind of ensure that they're going to stay put. And also, you know, giving the neck a little bit of a back bow after you pull the frets out also helps out to where you're not chewing up or pulling out a lot of wood out of the uh, fret slots, you know, when you're removing them. But make sure that you straighten out the fretboard when you put them back in. Now, this has been working out pretty good. Uh, I've been using the radius block. You guys seen the previous video. I fixed the inlay on this thing that was popping up or popped up and then came completely off. Um, got the whole fretboard even using a radius gauge. All right, you can pick up different forms of these, but they all basically do the same thing. They're all marked for different radiuses. I got two different ones of these, and then I have a whole set of smaller ones with a little bit of handle on them. Either one works just great. So 14 inch radius is on this neck, so I had to match it with a 14 inch radius block to even everything down. So when I'm putting in frets, I make sure that the fret wire is the same radius of the neck. That's something, another thing you're supposed to do. Now, I've seen some videos where people have not done that. And in doing so, you're going to call yourself, cause, uh, cause yourself, sorry, 
big nightmares. All right. In time, expansion and contraction with the wood, wood drying, reoiling it, whatever, however you, whatever you uh, recondition your fretboard with, um, those frets are going to work themselves out, even if you glue them in. If you use uh, CA glue or if you use wood glue or whatever you use to, you know, make sure that your frets going to stay put. Um, if you don't radius them, they're, they're going to come out. So, how do you raise your fret wire? Here you go. This stuff, this thing works really good. Um, I think that there really isn't too many other tools as far as for radiusing fret wire. Um, this one I kind of like a lot. The only problem with it is there's no markings on it to tell you where you are as far as your radius goes. So you have to use this kind of gingerly. I know it sounds kind of goofy, right? So what I end up doing is I will put the fret wire through both rollers, including the top one, and start turning this down so it's right on top of the fret wire, not adding any pressure. Then I'll give it just a little tiny turn, lock it in place, run a little bit through there, check it with, of all things, the radius block. It's a lot easier to check it with the radius block. You can also check it using your radius gauge, but it's a little bit harder to check it with it. You're know, putting it up against the wire, the wire is kind of flimsy, depending if you're using uh, uh, pyramid shaped wire or rounded wire pyramid shaped wire is a little bit harder for the uh, to sit on the top of it without kind of like sliding off to the side the gauge ah, not gauge but the um, sanding block your radius blocks works out really good because you're able to take the fret wire and just kind of like hold it up against it and you're right with the radius of that block that's how you know you're there but to get there is kind of a little bit of a trick. Every time you check it, turn it a little bit more, run it through again, and then check it. If it still needs to kind of meet that radius a little bit more, turn it in a little bit more downwards and then run it again. Eventually you'll get there. Remember, you can add little bits. You add too much, well now you're taking this wheel and you're putting it over here to straighten that wire out again. It becomes a pain in the ass. So getting used to how this tool works is kind of uh, a fun process and aggravating because the little bit that you turn that, that wheel's going down and you are going to change the radius of what that fret wire is. Another thing, making sure that your fret slots are clean. Now, Stumac sells these tools here, which are kind of nice. This one's kind of like a little bit of a pick. And this gets inside of the fret slot, and you can get right up to the edge of the binding and pull up the crap that's in the corners of it. Now, if your fret slot is not deep enough, or there's some glue and stuff that's inside the fret slot that's stopping you from putting that fret, well, this tool here works out great. It's made for binding, as you could tell. You know, it's just not a solid piece of uh, to go back and forth. And you stick it in there and run a couple times, or stick it and run a couple times, and you're able to get up to the edges of your binding and clean out that fret, that fret slot. Using this tool here makes loosens up everything that's inside there, and you can pull it out. Compressed air, you know, you guys know how I like my compressed air, ensures getting the dust and crap out of the fret slot. So when you're working with the fret wire itself, all right, so every time you cut the fret wire, you end up making this little point at the end of the fret. When the fret wire comes, it's nice and squared off. There's no little point there. Well, that's because when you're cutting, measuring your fret out and you cut it, well, you're squeezing the end together. Now you have to get rid of that. That right there, to me, is a pain in the ass, especially when uh, it bends the tang a little bit that's underneath there, if you can see that. And I like to start off with square on both sides. When I measure my fret wire out, I just want like a little bit hanging over the edges of the binding, not a lot. So I'm not wasting a lot. But this is the part to where it kind of gets a little bit wasteful. So what I end up doing is I'll get right a little bit past that pinch and get rid of it. So that gives me a nice clean piece of wire to work with. So after that, well, since this has got binding on it, now this tool here is really nice for nipping the uh, tang off of there, but you gotta be careful with it because if you put it in too far and try nipping it, well, you bend that end a little bit. So I just bend, cut it a little bit at a time, 
make sure it's seated properly and cut and that should be enough right there to get past what I wanted to get past yep it works out perfect now another thing you want to do is there's a little bit of a lip right there where I cut off that tang I don't know if you can see that or not you gotta get rid of that so I'm gonna go ahead and file file that not changing the or putting an angle or anything I'm running the file nice and flat underneath the fret wire that way it gets rid of that without tilting or putting an angle on the bottom of the fret and that should work out just great so measuring your fret wire so what I end up doing is I'll take my fret wire the part where I cut the tang stick it inside this slot it's not going to go very far but just stick it right close up against the slot push down on it just a little bit not much just to kind of let it sit there not drop it Make sure it didn't damage the fret wire okay start over again put the fret wire in there this time hold it in place get right up against the fretboard with your cutter and I will back this off about maybe a sixteenth or an eighth just to leave a little bit there remove the fret wire from the slot cut it Get a nice clean cut, nip the tang on it, don't remember don't put too much of it inside there at one time because you can twist it. I already know that I'm going to have to kick a little bit more off of that. See if I got to, yep I'm going to have to take a little bit more off of that. to file that file that down because get rid of that little piece of tang that is still lingering underneath there it ensures your fret is going to sit nice flat on each edge check to see how it is as far as going to fit and being problems I got a little bit of room on each side for the uh, Binding, go ahead and add a little bit, make sure I got a clean clean tip. Otherwise you get a drip at the end of it. And I just add a little bit of glue. And it's coming. Put a little bit on the ends. Put a couple of drops in the center. Not a lot because you don't want it to squirt out all over the place. Set my fret in the slot. And I like using the little clamp here to get that sucker to get in there. And it seats it pretty damn nice too. And I'll let that sit for, you know, just maybe a minute, not even. And the super glue, crazy glue, or CA glue, whatever you call it, you know, will start to dry pretty quick within seconds and it'll be done. So I still have the rest of this fretboard. Now, when I get to the, this area of the fretboard, I'm going to have to use the hammer and tap them in because I can't get that this clamp to get around this area, especially closer to the horn. If this was a, um, a fretboard that was screwed on well I could just remove it from the body and I can get to the bottom part over here with no problem there's different attachments for the base of this thing underneath it that it's got a nice felt underneath there to where it won't damage your fretboard the back of your neck so basically that's it the suckers in kind of give it a little bit of an eyeball and make sure that the ends are flat and everything looks good it's up against the the ends are up against the top of the um, binding and the rest of it is squished on top of the fretboard and once that glue dries it makes them pretty hard to pull those things out all right so I'm gonna finish this up and get the rest of it done hopefully this, this information can help you guys hopefully it's you know something useful and then once I get done installing the frets 
I'm not going to go to the next step until I know for sure that, which will probably be another, the next day, that these guys are going to be nice and dry. I'm not going to have any problems where I'm going to pull any of these frets out or have any problems with them. Now, the reason why these Chinese guitars, the frets come out so easily is because they don't have much of a tang on the bottom of them. There's not much of a tang on these guys. And uh, they just kind of pull right out. And what makes it a lot easier is giving the neck a little bit of a back bow, opening up that gap a little bit for that fret to kind of come out a lot easier. The Stumac fret wire, it's got a, a deeper tang. Um, it seems to have better uh, teeth on it to lock on the sides. Just much better quality. All right, you guys, take it easy. Have a good one. Hope all this information helped you guys out. And uh, you guys can do your own fret work.